Hey, so I happened to watch this video clip last night, which I will find and I will link in the description below. Just this little short video where uh, Tony Robbins was talking to Theo Vaughn, who I'm just starting to love. And they were talking about how, Theo was talking about how, um, what was it? He's not proud of him. He, he like can't go to a place where he's proud of himself because he's so used to other emotions that uh, are, you know, don't allow him to feel that way. And, you know, it's almost like he's abandoning friends if he allows himself to have this new feeling. And, you know, this is like such a human thing that almost everybody is suffering from. I've, almost everyone could relate to that, I think, if they sat and talked about, and uh, thought about it. Um, it's like you, it's like you have this known mental space. I've experienced this now because, um, I made a massive, massive mental shift in 2018 and 2019, where I went from weighing almost 200 to, uh, I got down to one, like 115. And it was a, I had a major driving force behind that, which was, I was about to be 40 and I was single. And I had actually just had kind of a heartbreaking situation that um, really uh, made me um, want to, what am I trying to say here? Like, I, I felt like my weight was, I didn't think that it could possibly be like the cause, but it was such a interfering factor for me. Like it was such a problem for me mentally. And after, you know, I just, I was like, I never gonna have that experience again. I, it was a really big like motivator. I was just like, I'm never gonna have that experience again because if that ever happens again, I'm not going to be able, I want to not be able to say I was fat. It was because I was fat, you know? Um, I was just like, I'm removing this experience from ever being a possibility again. So I had like a big motivation from that. And then also I had the motivation of that I was about to be 40. So I had, I had some, which I was like, in my mind, I was like, 40 is the drop dead date. You can never find somebody after that, which is total bullshit. Okay. That was, if you're suffering from anything like that, if you're in your twenties or thirties and you think that there is some age deadline for you to find the right relationship, that is bullshit. I mean, there are currently, I think, limit physical limitations on having kids, but you can even freeze your eggs and stuff. So um, that's bullshit. But anyway, I had that driving factor too, because I was like, firmly like, if I do not find somebody, if my age does not still start with a three while I'm single, um, I'm fucked. Not the case, obviously. Uh, but <laughs> so I had these major, major driving forces propelling me through all of the mental shit that prevents people from changing because I hit every one of them. I swear to God, like there, it was get, shifting from one place mentally to another place and staying there is incredibly difficult because of this thing that Theo Vaughn said, there is this known space and I've, I've existed in three of them. Now there is this known space that is that feels like home. I think I think Tony Robbins even said it's like your emotional home. And if you move out of it, you will know exactly what he's talking about. There is this place that feels it can feel shitty as fuck to be there, but it still it still feels like there is this sense of being where you belong. Um and and there's a there's a overwhelming sense of safety maybe not even safety for, maybe not even being safe from bad things happening to you but it's like it's the safety of the known which is it's just overwhelming trying to leave that safe place is so difficult for people you could take somebody who is the biggest adventurer that you know somebody totally fearless who will you know put themselves in countries that are not, you know, not a safe place to be. They'll go travel there. I'm just, this, this is my conception of like, you know, somebody fearless or somebody like my brother who, uh, if he wants to get to point B from point A, it doesn't matter how many uncomfortable conversations or experiences he has to have in the meantime to get there, he will do it. Like he went to law school to just solve a, solve what was an annoying problem, an expensive problem. He's just like, fuck it, I'm going to go to law school. Um, 
and just decided to do it and did it and went and got it done in like two and a half years. He's like, he's four years older than me. Um, he did this, he did this during, he graduated during COVID. So like, I mean, there are people like that, the most fearless, the people that just do shit that other people would be so like, ah, that I don't want to do those, those unknown situations. I don't want to do that. But the thing is, he is in a known mental space. Like those experiences are where he is comfortable. If he needed to move somewhere else, this most adventurous person, if he needed to move somewhere else mentally, he would struggle just as much as everybody else is struggling with their own moves out of the known personality. You know, when you're looking around at your life and everything you've created, that is the output. That is the final product of your current mental place. And if you want to get somewhere else, if you're not happy with your life, which so many people are not, and they will remain that way, uh, you have to move into a different unknown. And it is terrifying. When I went from that high weight to that low weight, it, it involved almost completely changing my behavior with food, obviously. Uh, it, I, it changed almost completely my behavior with exercise. And it, the biggest thing was there were two other main major things that I had to contend with. One obviously was that I no longer had the comfort of this thing that I did. You know, um, people that eat don't do it because they love to eat most of the time. It's, there's this comforting, it's that it's this known thing that you do. And there's certainly some dopamine release or whatever from eating. Uh, and I had to just completely let that go. Obviously I just, every, you know, it would start for me kind of like later in the day, it was like this major urge to keep things exactly where they were and to do this thing that sort of produced this minor amount of comfort compared to the major discomfort that it created in my life. Um, so I, every night from like 3 PM until whenever I went to bed, I had to sit there in this really uncomfortable place, really uncomfortable, distract myself. I did a shit ton of shopping. So I kind of traded one thing. I started buying other stuff. I started buying stuff. It worked. Um, but I spent like $20,000. So that was lame. But, um, I just had to make it through that period of time doing whatever I could. I don't drink, I don't smoke, so I had nothing else. Um, just making it through that really uncomfortable time where I did not continue to do the behavior that I had done pretty much my whole life at, at different weights. It didn't matter. Like I always would have this behavior at night. So I had to sit through that. And then uh, there was just this sort of grander thing where I knew that I was in the unknown, like having control over myself to that degree was something brand new. Being able to even make that happen was something brand new. Um, that was the manifestation part of that for me. In the last video, I was talking about how manifestation is not magicking something up. It's, it's often just one little element that you don't have any control over or that you didn't understand flipping and then you understand it or then you have control over it. It was terrifying to me to have that level of control over myself. It was like being in an entirely new mental world. And that was terrifying. I described it. I remember to my, saying to my ex, I feel like I am strapped on the nose of a jet going 500 miles an hour. Like, that's just how I feel. I just, I feel like I am hurtling towards something and I don't know what it is. And, um, it was just like, I don't know. It, it was, it was kind of horrifying. And I got down to this low weight and I stayed there for like two years and I was getting pretty used to that new mentality. I remember distinctly, thank God. I remember having a thought one night. I, I must've been, I don't know. I was, you know, it was perpetually still an uncomfortable situation for me. I still felt uncomfortable. I've got something going on and like, the evening time. This is uh, something that has yet to really reveal itself to me. Um, I think about it. I'm a Gen X, you know, I'm a, I'm a pretty typical Gen X. I was a latchkey kid and, and I came home from school every day to an empty house. Um, and I think there was just sort of, I don't know. I, I think that's what it stems from. 
it's just like basically once the workday is done or once school is done, you know, it's like, I don't know, there, there just must have been a loneliness or a longing for other people. And then my family wasn't like my brother wasn't didn't like want to hang out with me or anything. He was very independent, always doing his own thing, rarely ever home. And, you know, my mom didn't get home and then she was like cooking dinner because I had a pretty traditional family. And then, you know, my dad would get home from work at 630 or something and he just wanted to unwind then. And I think I just had this childhood experience of there being a sort of central emptiness during those hours. And I'm pretty sure that's where that whole thing came from for me. And I still feel it to this day. It's like, it's so ingrained in my cells. It's like down to the DNA level. And so um, even when I was at that lower weight, uh, I still would experience that and I had to just deal with it. And I remember one night sitting there thinking, God, I wish I could just like go to the store and get a bunch of shit and just like sort of numb out and watch a funny movie and just like eat a bunch of Cheetos or something. And I thought, you know, I just, that behavior was not something I did anymore because it was not congruent with that person. Uh, and I just remember thinking, well, it does suck that I can't do that, but it that is nothing compared to how much better this is. Just like being in the physical form that I wanna be in. I get to have this with me all day. I get to, you know, I get to have all the benefits of this. I never feel ashamed of myself. I never feel like I, there's something wrong with the way I look, which, I, my big thing for the last like five years has been trying to get over all of that. Cause who fucking cares? Who cares what other people think? Fuck other people. Other people are, are the ones that are ruining everything. Like fuck them, who cares? Who cares what they think? Really? That's been my thing for the last like five years. But um, you know, what happened after that was, I met my fiance, which was pretty, kind of a whirlwind that was enough of a disruption to my life all on its own and then my dad got sick and died of lung cancer really quickly like the whole thing was just nuts it was like a four or five month th between when I met Matt and when my dad died was like five months it was crazy um and at some point I just decided that I didn't want to fight that battle anymore I wanted to be comforted more than I wanted to be that new person I don't I don't know you know for like months of that whole thing with my dad I I did not engage in that behavior and all it took was like I want to say a month of beginning to just go back to that same comfort that same old behavior and it was like I was strapped to the nose of a jet hurtling back towards um the sort of the middle, the in-between, between that really low weight that I was at and I had gotten kind of like pretty fat before that. There was a middle weight that's sort of my genetic norm and I just hurtled back towards that. It was that, that known place was just sucking me there. And now with the benefit of hindsight and, you know, being able to look at it in retrospect, it's very clear to me now, you know, um, my dad dying was a very strange thing for me because of the relationship we had and because of the events of his death and my involvement in that and stuff and and how that had been and it was like that that uncomfortable unhappy but totally known and familiar place uh, I just like on I against my will almost I just like ran to that I just went straight back to that and um, it, you know, it's it's weird to say, but it, it had a, it had a benefit. But it's so strange, you know. You can get stuck in a place that you are unhappy with, thanks to it feeling safe, um, and you could just stay there for your entire life. It's it's really scary leaving that place. I don't know if scary is even the right. It's really uncomfortable. It's nearly impossible. It requires a level of awareness that I don't think most people are all that interested in having. You you basically have to be aware of leaving that place behind as you're doing it. 
and continuously making the choice to move away from it. And it is funny. It is like Theo Vaughn was saying, it's, it's almost like leaving your friends behind. And Tony Robbins said, you know, hey, I could take, you know, I could take you out of that place for, you know, 10 days or I forget, I forget them. He said, you'll look back at that and say, screw that. I'm not going to, you know, I'm, I don't want anything to do with that. And that is true. You know, from, from the, from the different perspective, I had the exact same thought. I was like, no way am I going back to that. I miss the comfort of that, like known and that safety, but no way am I going, I would never want to go back to that. And I didn't want to go back to it when it was happening. Um, but overall, you know, I, I, said that I wanted to be completely free of all of this. I wanted to be free of this issue that I had in my mind with weight. And it's all, t you know, it's all tied together perfectly in the end. It always does. Oh, it's crazy. So, but anyway, it is difficult leaving that safe place and it's required. If you're not happy, if you're not happy with where you are. It's required to create a different outer. You have to create a different inner space. So anyway, I just wanted to talk about that. Have a great day.